Here we're going to look at a problem from the 2005 Croatian Mathematical Olympiad. It's question 11.1. So this exam is broken down into different like grade levels and so that's what the 11 is and then this is the first question from that you know grade level. So the goal is to find all positive integer solutions to this nice equation involving factorials. So we have k factorial times l factorial is equal to k factorial plus l factorial plus m factorial. And now maybe some unrelated facts before we look at some hints for this solution. So my research area of vertex operator algebras and representation theory has a long history in Croatia. In fact, my PhD advisor is from Croatia, Anton Milos. I also have a collaborator who's at the University of Zagreb in Croatia, Drajan Adomovic. And finally, there's a conference every other summer in Dubrovnik that I've been to a few times related to my research area. Okay, so now some hints. The first thing that we want to notice is that this equation is symmetric in K and L. In other words, K and L are kind of playing the same role here, so we might as well assume that one is less than or equal to the other. Another thing that we want to start by doing is find some ordering between K, L, and M. Well, obviously K and L are symmetric, so we've got some sort of choice there, but can we argue that M is larger than them, smaller than them, or maybe there's total freedom over M. And then next, um, I think it's uh, really nice to use Wilson's theorem for this solution, although I don't think that's necessary. And then finally, when you're trying to solve some equation over positive integers that looks complicated like this, there's generally only one solution. Sometimes there's zero solutions, sometimes there's two solutions, maybe three solutions, but generally there's zero to three solutions with the most probable um, outcome being a single solution. So that's what we'll actually see here is there will be a single solution to this equation. Okay, so maybe give the problem a go with these hints and we'll come back with the solution. So hopefully those hints helped. Now we're gonna look at a sketch of a proof of Wilson's theorem, which will help us towards our solution. So this first statement is generally what you would see as Wilson's theorem in a textbook, but this second statement follows in a very similar way. So it says that if n is prime, then n minus one factorial is congruent to negative one mod n. And then this other statement says that if n is composite, but not equal to four, then n minus one factorial is congruent to zero mod n. So four is kind of a special case, and we'll like deal with that in the solution later. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the proof of each of these parts. So let's take this first part where n is prime. Let's take n minus one factorial and write it as one times two times three, all the way up to n minus three, n minus two, and n minus one. Now since n is prime, then the numbers one through n minus one are all relatively prime to n, which means they all have unique multiplicative inverses modulo n. Furthermore, we know only the number one and n minus one are their own inverses modulo n, so that's something you'd have to check, but like I said, this is a sketch of a proof, so we won't sketch that, which means we can group every other number in this box with its unique multiplicative inverse. And so that's exactly what we'll do. So in other words, we're gonna pair these with their multiplicative inverses. And like I said, none of them are their own inverses because the only numbers that are their own inverses um, modulo n are one and n minus one. So after that pairing, you'll see that they will multiply together to give us just one because two will be paired with its inverse, that multiplies to give us one, three will, and so on and so forth. So in the end, if we multiply everything on this right-hand side, we'll get one, one times n minus one, and this is all working modulo n. So in the end, we'll get minus one mod n because n minus one is congruent to minus one mod n. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we wanna do, if n is composite not equal to four, I'll let you guys do kind of n equals four on its own. So if n is composite but not equal to four, that means then we can write n as a times b with a and b between two and n minus one where a and b are not equal. That's where the not equal to four thing comes in. Great, 
So now what we want to notice is that n minus 1 factorial can be written as 1 times 2. We're going to hit a and b as we work up towards multiplying to n minus 1. But now when a and b multiply together, they're going to give us n which means this whole right hand side is a multiple of n, which makes this whole thing congruent to zero mod n. Great. And then just to kind of fill in the blanks, if we have four minus one factorial and we're working mod four, notice that four minus one is three, three factorial is six, and so that's gonna be congruent to two mod four. Okay, great. So now that we've got Wilson's theorem taken care of, I'll clean this up and we'll look at a solution. Okay, so now that we've got Wilson's theorem taken care of, we're ready to look at a solution. So let's look at a solution. So notice that K and L play a symmetric role in this equation. So that means we can kind of consider them as interchangeable. And we'll break this into two cases. The first case is when K equals L, and the second case is when K is strictly less than L. So if we get a solution for the first case, then we're done. And then if we get another solution for the K less than L, then obviously we'll have a symmetric pair here. So let's take care of these each individually. So let's first look at the case when K equals L. So when K equals L, our goal equation is going to collapse quite a bit. We'll have K factorial quantity squared equals 2K factorial plus M factorial. Great. Now the next thing that I want to do is take this equation and divide the whole thing by K factorial. So let's see what we get when we do that. So over here we'll have k factorial, and then over here we'll have two plus m factorial over k factorial. So notice that immediately tells us that m is strictly bigger than k. Because notice that if m was equal to k, then we would have k factorial is two plus one, which is three, but three is not anything factorial. And then if m were less than k, well, this right-hand side would not be a natural number, but k factorial is always a natural number. So the only thing that's left is that m is bigger than k. But that means that we can take this right-hand side and write it as 2 plus k plus 1 times k plus 2 all the way up to m minus 1 times m. Great. So now we'll look at each case from Wilson's theorem applied to this equation. So here, let's just do the first case, which is k plus one is prime. So let's see what we get there. So the left-hand side of this equation will tell us that k factorial is congruent to negative one mod k plus one. Great. And then the right-hand side of this equation will tell us that two plus k plus one all the way up to m is congruent to two mod k plus one. So we use Wilson's theorem on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, we just use the fact that all of this stuff left over is a multiple of k plus one. But putting these two things together, we get two is congruent to negative one mod k plus one but that can only happen if k plus one is equal to three because that's when two is congruent to minus one. But if k plus one is equal to three, then that means k is equal to two. But notice if k is equal to two and L is equal to k, then our original equation turns into four equals two plus two, which is four plus m factorial. But that means that m factorial is equal to zero, which tells us that there's no solution. So that means k plus one cannot be prime and give us some solution. So we'll move on to the next part, where is k plus one is a composite that's not equal to four. So let's clean this up and do that. Okay, so we just worked out the case when k plus one was a prime and we saw that that gave us no solution. Now we're looking at the case when k plus one is composite but not equal to four. So again, we'll apply our second part of Wilson's theorem to k factorial and notice that this tells us that this left hand side of this equation turns into k factorial is congruent to zero mod k plus one. 
Great. And then this right hand side of this equation is two plus k plus one all the way up to m is congruent to two mod k plus one. Great. But now what that tells us is that two is congruent to zero mod k plus one or k plus one equals two, which makes k equal to uh, one. But now if k equals one, and we're under the assumption that k equals L, then our original equation collapses to one equals one plus one plus m factorial. But that would mean that m factorial were equal to negative one. But again, there is no solution in that case. So that means k plus one cannot be prime and give us a solution. K plus one cannot be composite and give us a solution unless K, is, K plus one is equal to four. And that is all in the case when K equals L. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up this bit and then we'll look at the case when K plus one is four. Okay, so we reduced this case when K was equal to L to the only possibility is that K plus one equals four. And we did that using Wilson's theorem and a result similar to Wilson's theorem. So now we don't really need to worry about this so much anymore. Now that we've reduced this down to K plus one equals four, we can just push this back into the original equation. So notice that if K plus one equals four, then that means K equals three, but we're still under the assumption that K equals L. So that means K and L are both three, but that turns this guy over here into three factorial times three factorial equals 3 factorial plus 3 factorial plus m factorial. Great. But now 3 factorial is uh, 6. So this is going to be 6 times 6. So this is 36 equals 6 plus 6, which is 12 plus m factorial, which makes m factorial equal to 24. But there is a solution to that, and that's m equals 4. So let's see, in this case when k equals L, we have found a solution, and that is the solution k equals three, L equals three, M equals four. And that's the only solution that is possible under this setup by our argument using Wilson's theorem. Okay, so now let's go ahead and clean up the board and we'll consider the case when k is less than L. So we just looked at the case when k was equal to l, and we got a single solution when k and l were both equal to three, and when m was equal to four. Now we're gonna look at the case when k is strictly less than l, which is symmetric to the case when k is strictly bigger than l. So if we get a solution in this case, then we'll have a symmetric solution in that other case. So like I said, we're gonna look at the case when k is less than l in this case. So now let's go ahead and just rewrite our equation. So we have k factorial L factorial equals k factorial plus L factorial plus M factorial. So I wanna do two things here. I wanna divide this thing by k factorial and by L factorial and see some things that we notice here. So dividing this thing by k factorial will give us the following. So we'll have L factorial equals one plus L factorial over K factorial plus M factorial over K factorial. Great. Now we know that L factorial is a whole number. We know that one is a whole number. Given the fact that L is strictly bigger than K, we know this guy is a whole number. So that tells us that M factorial over K factorial is also a whole number from where it implies that M must strictly be bigger than K. Great, now let's do this same kind of thing, but divide this equation by L factorial and see what we get. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we'll have K factorial. On the right-hand side, we'll have one plus um, K factorial over L factorial plus M factorial over L factorial. Great. So now let's see what we have here. So we have k factorial as a whole number. We have one is a whole number. And then furthermore, we have k factorial over L factorial is not a whole number. But what that tells us is that this guy is also not a whole number. Because if m factorial over L factorial was a whole number, then it would, then it would 
because if m factorial over l factorial were a whole number, it would force this guy to be a whole number, which would force this inequality to be false. Okay, so what that tells us is that since m factorial over l factorial is less than one, we have immediately that L is strictly bigger than M. Now putting this all together, we have a ordering on K, L, and M. Notice that K is strictly less than M, which is strictly less than L. So now we're gonna take this ordering that we just built and show that it's inconsistent with this equation. So let's start with this left-hand side, k factorial times l factorial, but that needs to be equal to k factorial plus l factorial plus m factorial. But now we can build an inequality by replacing k and m with l, because l is larger than both k and m, and that'll give us three times l factorial here. But now, unless k is equal to one or two, this is strictly less than k factorial times l factorial. But like I said, that's unless k is equal to one or two. Notice if k is equal to three, then that thing is definitely bigger than three times l factorial. But examining the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that k factorial l factorial is strictly less than k factorial l factorial. And so that does not work. So all we are left with are these two possible outs here. K is equal to one or K is equal to two. So let's look at each of those. So if K is equal to one, let's see what happens to our equation. So that gives us L factorial equals one plus L factorial plus M factorial. Great. But now notice that those L factorials will cancel and we're left with one plus m factorial equals zero, but there's no solution in this case because m factorial is never equal to negative one. Okay, now let's look at the second case when k is equal to two. So that's going to give us two l factorial equals one plus l factorial plus m factorial. Great, but notice that that tells us that m factorial plus one equals L factorial. Great. So now notice that since L is strictly bigger than M, we have L factorial must be a multiple of M. So if we reduce this equation modulo M, we get one is congruent to zero mod M. Because notice the left-hand side is congruent to one mod M and the right-hand side is congruent to zero mod M. Again, because L is bigger than M. But notice that that is a contradiction unless M equals one, but M equals one is an impossibility um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, M cannot be one because it needs to be bigger than K and K is equal to two. So in the end, there are no solutions in this case when K is less than L, which means there's also no solutions in the case when K is bigger than L by a similar argument. So as a summary, we have a single solution, which is the solution three, three, four. And that's a good place to stop.